possession a match which has produced six frees so far good catch over there John O'Driscoll has he got the range he's got the first score John O'Driscoll who's looked very sharp in training for the last two weeks opening Cork's account Dennis Allen getting to the ball first ahead of Morgan Nix the fist ahead towards Dave Barry referee allows an advantage Dennis Allen had been fouled that's half blocked down good covering at the back Jerry Lynch not a good clearance giving it to Tompkins the danger man and here's Michael McCarthy and another good Cork attack yields a second score to the newcomer Michael McCarthy the skivering youngster so that's two points to nil Shefahi taking it quickly towards Dennis Allen who's getting there ahead of Morgan Nix the two balls that have come his way so far it's always a surprise to see somebody like Mick Spillan pick up Dennis Allen eventually Tony Nation that's half blocked down by Jack O'Shea picked up however by Michael McCarthy and he drills it over for his second point that's very accurate shooting by Michael McCarthy knocked into space towards Michael McAuliffe Tony Nation his marker Support from the other Tony, Tony Davis, Teddy McCarthy. Once again, Connor Cunahan. He looks all that terribly fast, but uh, the ball always seems to reach him nonetheless. Tommy Doyle fisting it into open space where it's reached Jared Murphy. On towards Connie Murphy. Front right around Tony Davis. Carry three points to two down, and that's William R. sticking it over the bar for the equaliser. Three points for Kerry, three points for Cork. It was lovely combined play. Connie Murphy setting it up. Held it well. Found Willie Marr and he stuck it over with the left boot. As they jump for this, there are about three or four groups of players. All saturating midfield. It breaks out to Paul McGrath, getting it onto the pussy right boot and Cork are in front again. This is a really fine display from both teams. Paul McGrath, the scorer, and it's four points to three. A view of Cork's bench. Billy Morgan here on the left. Over the head of Niall Cahalan. Going back there, Stephen O'Brien. Taking out Teddy McCarthy. Listing it forward to his midfield ally, Shea Fahey. Well, they showed too much of that to Kerry's Jared Murphy. And here's Dermot Hannafin picking out Michael McAuliffe. And the support play from Hannafin. And again, the attack breaks down. But here's Morris Fitzgerald to keep that momentum going. And Curry's point from play coming from Morris Fitzgerald, his third. That's the first of the three to come from play. And the sides are level. And it all started at the back. That greasy ball finding Morris Fitzgerald. He turned around, got it onto the right boot, and knew where to find the target. Well, while the pitch is very soft on top, it certainly hasn't cut up yet. Tommy Doyle in block down, finding Jack O'Shea. Towards Pat Spillane. Bahalan keeping a tight rein on Spillane, but he's free for once and he's released it inside to Jack O'Shea. Jack O'Shea dispatching it over the crossbar, and Kerry enjoy a two point lead. What great running forward by Jack O'Shea for his first score. Pat Spillane seeing the good running and intelligent positioning of Jack O'Shea. And despite the challenge, he makes it six points to four. Dermot Hannafin was leaping unchallenged. They challenged him when he hit the deck, all right. Morris Fitzgerald. Finding Pat Spillane. And he'll be planning to take the number three of Cork out around the centre of the field, if possible. Leaving space inside. And here's Fitzgerald, those long legs gallivanting forward towards goal. And he has stuck over his fifth point. Phenomenal shooting in his very first Munster final son of a former Kerry star Ned Fitzgerald and the 
green and gold very much in evidence Jared Murphy catching cleanly Clara made his league debut with Kerry against Monaghan and hit over three points in Clonus the same afternoon towards Connie Murphy taking Conor Coonahan to his left cuts Balan taken down and a free and look at Nahel Cahalan poised just in case the referee were to change his mind or something strange were to happen Morris Fitzgerald five points to his credit so far and you can now change that and make it six Kerry Lee by double scores and there are 22 minutes on the 99th monster final gone once again it's John O'Driscoll across towards Michael McCarthy who got two points in that early burst by Cork down to Dennis Allen they need another score and they need it quickly and they have got it from the boot of Dennis Allen Allen playing today in his 11th Munster football final. Jerry Lynch. Connie Murphy here. Trying to take it forward towards Morris Fitzgerald. It reaches Tommy Doyle. Outside to Pat Spillan, who would dearly like to score. The backup support from Ambrose O'Donovan. This is a bit like the old Kerry as Tommy Doyle finds it in. High and over the bar for one of the best scores of the match. Kerry 9, Cork 6, Tommy Doyle the sorer, well they seem to step up a, a notch or two there, Pat Spillan the one who instigated all of that, and there was support from Ambrose O'Donovan, and just look at how they built it up nicely, and Tommy Doyle whacked it over the bar. So four minutes to go in what's a highly competitive monster football final to half time that is and the tackle by Dermot Halvin will be penalised it is play continues Miss Tompkins will he put it over this time stopped Dave Barry has it and it goes off Charlie Nelligan's hands over the bar it's nine points to seven and with that score it means that each and every one of the Cork forwards has now scored Shea Fahey is the Cork free taker Coming out to meet it was Jerry Lynch, he dropped it down, Dave Dennis Allen, and a foul on Stephen O'Brien, and it's a free to Cork, which Larry Tompkins, I'm sure, will take. Tompkins, who's got one point from play. So champions Cork trailing by two points and indeed nine times this century Cork has won the title back from Kerry only to lose it again the very next year will that happen one more time Teddy McCarthy has moved onto the 40 and Larry Tompkins is now playing in midfield Tommy Doyle wishes to belt this one downfield as far as possible down by Conor Coonahan but only to the waiting Morris Fitzgerald who was so impressive in that first half good backup play by Dermot Hannafin loses it however to Paul McGrath young engineering graduate from UCC Dennis Allen into open space and it's Shea Fahey oh he took up a very good position and there's the bare minimum separating these sides what a marvellous ball that was across field. Shea Fahey jumping unchallenged, laying it forward for Dave Barry, and there's nobody near him if he wants to strike this one over for the equaliser. The St. Finbar's clubman has got his second score. The sides are level, and there are three and a half minutes gone in the second half. Tony Davis judges it to a tee. Tommy Doyle likewise taking the greasy sliding ball. Pat Spillan has come out to the centre. The layoff here towards William R. To Jack O'Shea. Ball of fumbling. Kicking and scoring. Michael McAuliffe's first.
first point of the match has restored Kerry's half-time lead. It's 11 points to 10. Jim Canelli there in the centre, and the Kerry substitutes there at the far side. So much talent down there. Lynch has changed his mind, he's going to take it himself. Carlson Fitzgerald beaten for it by Stephen O'Brien. He loses it and he's left it behind to Connie Murphy. Ranging down in goal. Closed on by Conor Cunahan. But still gets in the kick. And the point scores. I thought I heard a whistle, but the referee says the point does score. And so Kerry enjoy a two-point advantage. But there's plenty of time remaining. 12 minutes out of the second half. Teddy McCarthy held the ball up there to Michael McCarthy here. Inside towards Colin O'Neill, his first chance to impress. If he can lay it in for Dennis Allen. Oh, it's a great goal! Twelve minutes into the second half. The crowd has come to life. The opening goal was set up by Teddy McCarthy. Picking out Michael McCarthy here his namesake. Colm O'Neill couldn't quite hold it, but he did just enough. And watch for the run of Dennis Allen, left to right. And Charlie Nelligan was diving in mid-air, but it reached the top corner. Fitzgerald's shot taken down by Conor Cunahan. So what a beautifully balanced game of football this is. That's a slack pass out of defence. But good recovery by Niall Cahillan. Good shoulder as well. Michael McCarthy. Paul McGraw, rather. Now it's Colm O'Neill. Into open space one more time. Shea Fahey took up a good spot. This is Tompkins and Corker in a one-point lead. That's Tompkins' third score. 14 minutes now into the second half. And Cork go back in front again. Tompkins short to his fellow Kildare man, Shea Fahey, then taking the return. Onto the right boot, and it curls in delightfully. And Cork are in a two-point advantage. Tompkins now beginning to assert himself. He's got four. And here he comes, Owen Liston. Who played in his first final in 1978. The knee very heavily strapped, missed an entire season because of a shoulder injury and then when he was coming back, damaged the knee injury, damaged the knee rather. Connie Murphy comes off and so can Power and Liston bring Kerry back into it. Time is on their side if they're good enough. Morris Fitzgerald, that looks good. Two points between them. Wonderfully competitive game. Morris Fitzgerald again. What a goal will do for them here at this time. They trail by three points. Pat Spillane. And that's the first score he's got in three Munster finals. So just two between them. It's also the first point that Niall Cahalan there on the right has conceded in three Munster finals because he marked Joe Power in 1986. Tony Nation under it, lets it fall down, Michael McCall of Kerry needing a goal to stay in it. Jack O'Shea, ball wrestled to the ground, and the book is out once again. This time, the name of Conor Cunahan, I think, will be joining the others. Tompkins there, and Jack O'Shea, and I think Tompkins just trying to restrain Jack O'Shea. He didn't appreciate the unsporting nature of that challenge. It's still continuing, and that is really very ugly. And that surely now should be ascending off for Jack O'Shea. I'm afraid he's just lost his cool in the heat of the situation. Well, there's no excuse for that. It's been spilling over somewhat, and Pat Lane, I don't think, has seen it. Watching some other incidents like this one here. Ah, oh, what an awful way to finish. What was a very good game. And it's a complete brawl at this stage. Well, they talk about when the Australians and the Irish get together. But what about this? Heavyweight bant bantam battles, middleweight battles, all kind of boxing going on down there. Well, it's a real dust-up. And it's come two minutes into injury time. And a disgraceful way, absolutely disgraceful way to finish a monster final. 
Well, how is the referee going to restart this one? It was to have been a free in for Jack O'Shea, who was taken to the ground earlier on. Deep in take of breath by Pat Lane. A word to Pat Spillane, who I'm sure wants a few more minutes added on for all the stoppages. Tom Spillane questioning just what's happening. It's what we'd like to know too. It's going to be a free to carry. They trail, remember, by two points. Cork 114, carry 15 points. So they've got to go for a goal and hope that they can win it by one. Morris Fitzgerald's the taker. The little chip high and over the bar, and it's a one-point game. Well, we've had such changing fortunes in this match. Great football, exciting skills, punch-ups as well. It's a bit like the weather. We've had showers and sunshine, and it's all over. Cork remain the Munster champions.